everyone. Thank you for joining me and to discuss um, what it's like at Captain 64 and some time talking to me, hopefully to students out there about what it's like and what makes Captain special. So first of all, I'm going to ask Miss Carnan, what kind of things do we do beyond the classroom? What is enrichment? How does it work? Why is it a valuable thing for us at the school? I think one of the best things about our sixth form is that we encourage our students not only to reach their full potential academically, but we support their personal growth through the enrichment program. Um, and this is designed to extend their education and um, to extend them beyond their education and help with their personal growth as well. Um, so in year 12, all students participate in an enrichment program for one hour every Wednesday period five. And this gives students opportunities to try new activities and express themselves in creative ways, all whilst having fun. So we're helping with the development beyond the curriculum, which is which is a great thing to do. Um, and there's lots of great opportunities to choose from. So we've got sports, we've got the EBQ, we've got drama, we've got music. We've even got Envision, which is helping um, those in our wider community. And it allows them to liaise with external agencies, which I think is a great opportunity we give here at Clapton. Um, and I think thing that we need to take into account is what we do at Clapton is so amazing because not only do we allow students to engage some, with something that they're passionate about, but also it allows them to develop their applications, whether it's job applications, university applications or apprenticeship applications. And lots of our students have gone on to Russell Group universities, gone on to apprenticeships and jobs, all with the support of our enrichment program. So I think that's one of the main things that's really great about being here at Clapton. Oh, thanks very much. That's really um, useful information. And also we know that the students that benefit from that go on to do some wonderful things because they've got that confidence that's um, been sort of given to them because they've been part of those programs. It's really nice to get to mix as well. I think the fact that they get to mix with students that are internal and external and new adults that they've not met before is really helpful too. Right, Mr. Khan, why a BTEC? There's a big question for you there. Why study a BTEC at Clapton? Well, um, one of the things that is really, really important is that it provides different pathways to our students. So students who might not, who might struggle with exams, we have a combination of coursework and exams um, in terms of the assessment. Um, the three different qualifications that we offer are applied science, health and social care and business studies. Um, a lot of the students that do BTEC um, do really well at university as well because it has such a combination of independent learning and also exams um, that it allows them to actually use both of those skills when actually applying to and doing courses on, in higher education. Um, one of the other things that we've been really successful at doing is embedding the course, embedding the work experience um, within the courses. Um, so a lot of our courses are not just doing units of work and doing lots of coursework. They actually apply it to real world um, scenarios and also engage with um, employers. Um, and finally, one of the things that um, students sometimes are unsure about whether they want to go to university or not and might want to do an apprenticeship and a BTEC is a really good way forward in terms of if they want to make their mind up and try and think about what other skills that I actually need to learn in order to get into an apprenticeship because I'm very much a practical course as much as it is about actually doing some of the um, examined units, some of the assessments. Thanks ever so much. Um, lots of information there about the BTEX and in the perspectives you can also see lots of information about how they work but our girls go on to some amazing university opportunities um, and do some amazing things with those BTEC pathways at Clapton. Um, Miss Batchelor, you are a sixth form tutor, have been part of the team for two years. Would you like to tell us what it's like being a sixth form tutor, how it's different for you and what, what it entails? Yeah, so um, I'm now a year 13 form tutor I've um, only been part of the sixth form team for the last two years. Um, before that, I had a lower school um, form group. Um, so being part of the sixth form team, I've really enjoyed. It's something that I'd like to continue. Um, it gives the girls a really kind of wide variety 
of um, experiences. So I meet them every morning. We have our collective time and that gives an opportunity for me to check in with the girls, have a group discussion or have some one to one time if they need to check in. Um, we have our own sick form notices. So the sick form notices are tailored to the needs of year 12 or year 13, which I think um, is really helpful in guiding them and giving them the correct information that they need day to day. And within those notices, there's kind of different topics to do with uh, different things that we're looking at month to month. Um, we have topical assemblies and also in the notices, they're given so many opportunities. So I think that's kind of the key thing that I've noticed. Um, being part of the sixth form team is every day it's almost trying to get through those notices because there's so many opportunities coming from internally inside Clapton external agencies wanting to come in um, as well as opportunities for the sixth form to leave Clapton and go out and experience other things in the community um, so lots and lots for the students on offer um, lots of speakers coming in PSHCE we have every two weeks and that's something that I really enjoyed as a sixth form tutor as well um, and just getting to know the girls which now in year 13 we're focusing on UCAS references, UCAS personal statements so it's just helpful building that relationship with them over the two years and having that consistent form tutor just to sort of remind them of all the different things that they've done from enrichment in year 12 through to if they've had opportunities with Young Enterprise, with Linklaters, whether they've done really well in one of the focus day challenges that we offer. Um, so yeah, lots and lots to cram in, but I think it sets the girls up really positively for any future study. So I've really enjoyed it. Thank you. And thank you for all the work you've done in the, the sixth form and being part of the sixth form team as well, because it's really, really is a big team. And without teamwork, we're not going to get the girls to get the grades that they get and we're not going to be able to challenge them in the way they need to be challenged. So thank you for that. Um, Miss Hewitt, thank you so much. You're also part of the sixth form team as a tutor, but also head of a massive faculty and you fit it all in and always smiling and happy. What's the difference, do you think, for sixth form students or being a member of the sixth form rather than being part of the lower school? Because lots of our girls and lots of students say, oh, you know, it's, it's in Johnny GCSEs. What actually is it like being part of a sixth form at Clapton? You're on mute at the minute, miss. Thank you. Apologies. I was going to speak um, from an art, design and technology point of view, but I think that the things that I'm going to say uh, cross over from most of the subjects. And the biggest difference for the students in the sixth form is the amount of independent work that they need to be doing outside of the lessons at home or in private study. For my subject, that's art, design and technology, including photography, um, the students are expected to do quite a lot of um, research, visits, interviewing artists, perhaps buying specialist materials, going on visits and journeys to gather reference material to bring back into the classroom to work from at home. Um, they also have to, in my subject, but I think this probably happens in other subjects as well, work on a much bigger scale, using different specialist materials, processes and techniques, um, taking more risks actually, and I'd say that's in every subject, the risk taking, and that just makes you that, um, it makes you more of a grown up, I suppose, rather than being directed by the teacher. Um, so I'd call that a lot of self-directed learning across all of the subjects. Um, you also have more than one teacher and certainly in uh, my subject that can cause a problem at times when students um, want to follow a teacher and they want to follow the teacher's advice but actually they might have two conflicting viewpoints or two opinions and that actually is um, quite difficult to get used to when students arrive in year 12 and it's about learning to be um, more aware listening to the adults around you taking advice but then going with perhaps your own um, gut feeling and about just basically being a more broad individual and more independent thank you and i think that's the key isn't it being part of a sixth form is being independent and having 
making sure that you do put time aside to do that extra work at home so you can feel that you're being successful. But it's a lot of extra work you do need to put into BTECs and A-levels mm. to make sure that you do make that progress. Thank you very much. Um, Miss Hope, Head of Progress at Clapton, been a Head of Progress for um, three years now at Clapton or four years. Um, how do you or how did you and the team support students during lockdown and what do you do as part of your role to support the students at the school? Hi, um, so during lockdown, we supported the students. So myself as the head of progress, um, the six one team and the tutors, we supported them in broadly three ways. So um, academic, well-being and, and next steps and careers. So in terms of um, academic support, we um, had the notices that Miss Bachelor was talking about that um, every week we would produce notices that focused on the girls' um, writing skills, on how to improve their grammar, um, on how to have build really comprehensive revision and study timetables. Um, and we would also, um, there's a massive emphasis on, on student wellbeing because we really understood that every single student was having a very different experience during lockdown. And so to really um, establish where the area of need was greatest and to really give the students a kind of personalised um, support programme, we as a team would phone every single student at least once a fortnight um, and the girls that were struggling um, due to any, all number of different circumstances, they would get a phone call every single week. Um, and, I, and I know because so many of the girls are taking the time to say how much they appreciated that because it just gave them the space to really be able to say, look, this is what's going really well, but actually, I'm struggling with this and we were able then to put in support um, whether it be working with external agencies so we've got a really good working relationship with um, counselling services um, and with other external agencies or it might just be giving them that encouragement that they can do it that they're doing really well and then to feed back to the subject um, teachers so that works really well and we um, regularly did and we continue to do surveys um, again because not every student feels comfortable um, saying you know putting their hand up in form time and saying oh I'm having a really rubbish day um, so just giving them that space confidentially to be able to say I'm struggling in this area um, and this is the support that I need um, and those well-being surveys were again really highly received from the students they really appreciated that that opportunity to be able to talk about how they were struggling um, we also so with our notices um, we had a big push on um, mental health um, and also just those really good self-care strategies so um, making sure that the girls were eating and drinking regularly and healthily, that they were, we were introducing things to them like mindfulness, trying to get them to jump up in the air and do some exercise so they're not just sat on their sofa or at their desk all day, um, and just encouraging them that like, you know, a healthy body and a healthy mind is so important for studies. And then finally, um, we supported them and continue to support the girls um, with their next steps so at the moment we currently have 25 girls next door um, who are receiving help with their personal statements um, and we launched UCAS during lockdown um, and the girls really engaged with that and the form tutors have been working so hard marking their personal statements giving them advice on um, what steps they want to or what steps they should be taking uh, whether it's university apprenticeship or going into the workplace um, and so we provided them with lots of different opportunities and that's why our girls get into the top universities because they take part in so many programs programs like goldsmith's progression scheme and k plus which is king's college um, like another King's College progression scheme 
And so we made sure that after lockdown, they came back and they were absolutely ready to go with UCAS. And now, even though the deadline's January, by Friday, we'll have 140 applications sent off. So yeah, lockdown has been really difficult for the girls, but it's also been a really good opportunity for them as well. Thank you. And, and again, thanks for all the work you're doing with the UCAS. I know the girls are really appreciative of it. So thank you and the tutors. Um, Miss McCreesh, what's the most enjoyable aspect of teaching Year 12 and 13 at Clapton? Because you love teaching Year 12 and 13 and you've been teaching them for many years. What's the best aspects of it? What do you enjoy the most? Um, so for me, the most enjoyable aspect of teaching um, Year 13 at Clapton Girls is supporting students on their journey through A-level English and seeing the amazing development and progress that they make in that time. Uh, as a teacher, it's particularly pleasing to see how their critical voices emerge through class discussion and debate. And one of the most rewarding experiences for A-level teachers, and I'm sure this is in every subject, is when our students bring a fresh perspective to something we've taught them, sharing new ideas that we may not have considered before. Um, a very special aspect of teaching English literature is that you know that you will probably introduce students to a text or texts that will become lifelong favourites. And, you know, often when we see past pupils, they'll comment on how much they enjoyed studying texts like The Great Gatsby or, for example, the Carol Ann Duffy Poetry Collection. Um, as a faculty, um, and I know this is across the board in the school, in normal you know, teaching time, we believe it's really important to contextualize what we study. And typically across the two years, we would visit the theater, we'd visit Shakespeare's birthplace in Stratford-upon-Avon um, and various exhibitions throughout the two year study. And all in all these shared experiences, um, along with the knowledge that the students have selected your subject because they truly love it, that's what really makes um, the experience of teaching A-level a very special one at Clapton Girls. Thank you. Thank you so much for explaining what it is that you love and showing what it is you love about teaching the girls at Clapton. Right, I'm going to just skip to Miss Campbell now because she's got to go and help with lots of uh, students doing UCAS. So, Miss Campbell, how do you support students academically? What even is supervised study? How does it work? And uh, what about well-being? How do we do that? So, Miss Reader, as you've just um, defined, I've got kind of two focuses with my role. And I, sorry, I'm going to have to just turn off Miss Hope's. Um, maybe just switch to another teacher because Miss Hope's computer's on next to me. Okay, I will do. Um, Miss Linders, um, how do we get the students at Clapton to achieve so highly? What is it that we do or what is it that um, we put in place to support them so they do go on to some of the best opportunities uh, that they can go on to? OK, so for a BTEC, which is what I teach, BTEC Health and Social Care, the level three and six form, we... Um, always pitch the tasks at the highest level at distinction so the students initially we get them to aim for distinction and then if they don't quite reach that they'll get merit or, or pass rather than aiming for pass and then doing it as a, a challenge to get higher so that really sets them up from the beginning to really try try for the highest grade we do lots of scaffolding um, of work. So we really build it up. And for the exam units, because for the BTEC, I think a lot of people don't realise there's some quite difficult exams that the girls have to sit in BTEC. And for those units, we do, because the, the, the girls are often quite um, anxious about the exams. There's a lot of extended writing in, in a number of the health and social care exams. And we do regular walking, talking mocks where we use the examiner's reports, which have good and bad examples of answers across the country and that is a really um, crucial way of getting the girls ready for the exams they really enjoy those lessons and find those um, most useful I would also say for the BTEC where we see them for 30 hours of the teach there's, there's more than one teacher but they become almost like a nice little small family and they support each other and they can offer each other 
a lot of peer support. You see them marking each other's work, talk, you can hear them talking about the work to each other. And that I think is really pushes them to, to achieve more. Um, additionally, during lockdown, we did this quite a lot, is we set them and um, give them some external courses that are being run. For example, there was a really good one, um, a British Sign Language course that was run, and a number of the girls signed up for that. There's um, lots of different uh, websites that we um, signpost them to that are in addition to the learning that they do in school. And during lockdown, we did a weekly kind of newsletter about things that they could watch, podcasts to listen to, news reports to read that would give them the more varied knowledge to help them with their course. And you can see them bringing those into their coursework, but also into their discussions in the classroom. So their, their knowledge and their cultural capital as well is also being improved. So. Thanks. Thanks ever so much for that. And, you know, we do have lots of girls in the BTEC pathway in our sixth form. And um, I mean, this year it's normally about two thirds to a third. So there's a, a large number, it's about 60 girls, 50, 60 girls that will go on and do the BTECs at Clapton and be very successful. So thank you for that. Miss Campbell, what is supervised study? How does it work? What is your yeah. role in the sixth form? Apologies for those technical difficulties. So yes, as I was saying, there's I have two kind of two focuses to my role. Um, the academic side, I supplement all of the amazing work that's done by all the staff here um, by making sure that the students are making the most of every opportunity, whether that's a learning opportunity, an extracurricular opportunity, or a supercurricular opportunity so that they are leaving Clapton with the best possible skills, with the best possible achievements to set them up for success and just wonderful things in the future. Um, so you mentioned supervised study, that is something that um, happens daily. Um, so periods one and two, if students aren't in a timetabled lesson, i.e. their subject lesson, they will do some independent study um, at the moment, we're running it in the hall. Um, so students get an opportunity to develop their independent skills, independent study skills. Um, and that's something that's really important for once they leave, when they leave Clapton, particularly if they're going on to university. So I personally work with students to identify which areas of their independent study skills they need to develop um, so that they really make those sessions count in the morning. And it really does make a difference um, if they're focused and if they are using all of the advice and guidance, then that really pays off. And, and I see it time and time again, those students in year 13 have been really dedicated and committed um, in those supervised study periods. They are coming out with the best best grades and going on to the best opportunities. And as most, you know, a lot of you have mentioned that, yes, the university is kind of the a common pathway for a lot of our students, but there's so many other brilliant students that do go on to do amazing apprenticeships and other opportunities. So again, the time that they spend and their productivity and supervised study all plays into that. Um, going to the well-being side of things, um, I work with Miss Hope um, at the moment and we um, provide lots of pastoral support for all of our students. Um, so that for me comes in the form of providing one-to-one -one, uh, sessions with students that may need some uh, emotional support or they may need some guidance in terms of um, kind of where they are in with their subjects um, or they might be kind of struggling with managing all the demands um, of kind of post 16 education so that's something that I support with um, I also liaise with external agencies um, if students are accessing support outside of school and kind of touching on some of the things that our year 13 form tutors have spoken about. Um, my, I'm very much involved in supporting the students with accessing different schemes and helping them to apply for those and kind of sourcing those, um, again, working alongside other members of staff, um, such as key person, is our careers lead, and there's lots of opportunities there for our girls to really supplement their studies and again go on to wonderful things after Clapton. Thanks very much, and you better have to go and help yeah, all those students with their UCAS applications. But thank you for your time.
Um, Miss Prudho, how do we ensure challenge in the lessons to make sure that the girls do achieve at the highest level and they can actually make the progress that we want them to make to go on to their further sort of education, their jobs and apprenticeships? What kind of things do you think we do to ensure that we've got lots of challenge in the lessons in the sixth form? Miss Prudho? No, OK. Right. Sorry. That's yeah. OK. Yeah. Thank you. OK, so I think my answer to this question is almost a roundup of what everybody has kind of contributed to tonight's discussion. And the first thing I would like to say is that the teachers in the sixth form are absolute subject specialists. They are seriously the cream of the crop. Um, not only are they committed and passionate about their own subject and about enhancing their own knowledge and skills, not just for themselves, but also their teams, but also really kind of are dedicated to ensuring that those sorts of um, that knowledge, that skill is really meticulously planned within the lessons that they deliver. I also think on top of that, so not only are they absolutely the best teachers ever, um, they also really care. So they know their students inside out, they use the student data, they have high expectations for every single student and they plan meticulously to ensure that the students can really access the curriculum and the content. Um, another thing that I would say with regards to um, ensuring that there's challenge within the lessons is that our staff across the board, whether it's sixth form or whether it's lower school, have real high expectations for the students. And I think because the staff have high expectations, then, then therefore the students also have high expectations for themselves, regardless of whatever pathway or prior attainment they have coming into the sixth forms, so whether they go on to a BTEC pathway or whether they go on to an A-level pathway. And they're really kind of supported to ensure that they kind of understand how to access the curriculum, how to really work hard in lessons and how to, um, apply their knowledge when it comes to uh, assessments that they're taking. Uh, with regards to the lessons, um, the lessons here are extremely challenging. I know that some of the teachers have touched upon this in uh, the discussions tonight, but we absolutely teach the top and scaffold down all of the time. Um, we ensure that, you know, that um, the lessons are relevant, they are contextualised, that the, the students are not only developing their knowledge, but they're also developing their skills. And that's really, really important. I know that um, the teachers have touched upon independent study skills. And I think with regards to independent study skills, the reason why our students do so well is not just because we have excellent subject teachers that kind of then transfer their knowledge to the, to the, to the students. They're also really um, supported in understanding how to study and how best they study. Um, a lot of our staff do their own research, they read around the subject, they do a lot of professional development that actually then transcends into the classroom itself. Um, and I think we can definitely see that with the high challenge that we have in the classroom, the assessments that the students have, um, the excellence that is shared, that is modelled, that is deconstructed all of the time. So not only do the students know about and understand the content that's being studied, they can also actually apply it and contextualize it in whatever they go on to next. And hence the reason why our students here at Clapton, when they go on to transitions into apprenticeships, into jobs or into university, not only do they have a plethora of skills, um, knowledge and understanding, but they also know how to apply that and um, they're really kind of um, supported and um, prepared for the next steps. Thank you. And I really want to reiterate, uh, reiterate what you've just said about the teaching. I mean, my job as head of sixth form is made so much easier because of all the amazing teaching that goes on. And when I walk around and see the lessons and they're buzzing and the students are all engaged and actively learning, and it's the active learning that they're doing, it is really phenomenal for me to be able to see that and be part of that. And it certainly gives the girls the best chances and the opportunities going forward. Um, Ms. Taylor Burge, you are a member of uh, the sixth form team, but you're also part of the maths department. And really, I'd like you to sort of share some of your ideas on how we prepare the students for all the exams, because lots of the students will be worried about those exams. But what it is particularly that you've noticed that we do at Clapton in preparing the students for the exams and preparing them for those sort of assessments that they're doing. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So how do we prepare students for exams? So at Clapton, I think 
it, we think it's really important to be really transparent with students so they have a really clear idea of what our expect, expectations are, what the bigger picture is of what learning they're going to do and what that will look like over the course of year 12 and year 13 so that they know exactly what they're expected to do in their exams. So it's been mentioned before about teachers being real specialists in their subjects. And I think it's a lot of time and effort goes into delivering the scheme of work, taking into account exam specifications, examiners reports from previous years. Um, and this is also shared with the students. Um, in maths, we make sure that they know exactly what topic they're covering at what point in the year and with which, which teacher. So they have a really clear idea of what their progress should look like and how best to prepare themselves for their exams. Um, we also, as a school, uh, use Satchel One. So this is our online platform and a lot of the resources and schedules are shared on the platform. So students can kind of manage their timeline in the lead up to the exams. And it also helps with their independent study, which I know has been mentioned as a real massive part of um, the sixth form. Um, other ways in which students can feel prepared, we have a real emphasis on low stakes assessment in the school. So doing lots of small kind of exam practice to make sure students are constantly practicing, retrieving information, whether it's on one topic or a mixture of topics. So kind of mimicking what they're expected to do in their exams. Um, we also really prioritize self and peer assessment, things like getting students to look at mark schemes so they have a really clear idea about how to maximize their marks and make sure that they're answering extended questions in a really clear and thought out way. And then obviously we do lots of mock exams and kind of staggered practice papers um, where we take that data and we'll use it so that we can then have a clear idea of where individual students' um, strengths and weaknesses are. And then we can address those gaps and prepare lessons to make sure that there aren't gonna be any surprises when it comes to the exams and students feel really prepared to achieve the qualifications that they deserve. Thank you. And what is really useful to know as well is that since lockdown, lots of our girls have been in their lessons and I know Miss Hope talked about it as well, but the recovery curriculum is a real focus. And the fact that every lesson, the students are catching up with the work, revisiting work, there's lots of activities that encourage that. And I know that in maths, particularly um, those lessons, you have all the gap attacks at the start of the lessons. And in other subjects, we have all those do now activities to make sure that we kind of refreshing our memories and making sure the girls can go over things that they won't feel as confident about because of what happened um, on March, really onwards for the year 12s. Um, and finally, Miss Story, um, thank you for joining us. Could you um, talk to me or talk to us a little bit about what it is um, that you do to support students with post 16 and post 18 uh, careers at CGA? Yeah, absolutely. So um, so in terms of post 16, so all of the students uh, leading up to uh, their decisions in year 11 will have experienced um, careers in, embedded into all of their curriculum subjects um, in a variety of ways, whether that's uh, sort of employer interactions as part of lessons or class trips. Um, opportunities to to visit a wide range of different companies and organizations and um, they will have also been offered uh, a wide range of opportunities in terms of mentoring uh, which will be um, in in many cases with our partners at Linklater's law firm but also uh, through a range of other providers with different specialisms in different areas um, they're also like relating to that a, a wide range of business links um, that support uh, not only the careers in the curriculum, but um, additional sort of programmes that we run separately. Uh, and they will all have had the opportunity to have a one to one interview with me as well, um, which we think is a, a really important part of their um, informed decision making process, at, like leading from year 11 into sixth form or, or college or uh, and and their sort of futures beyond that, sort of making sure that they're making sound decisions in terms of, um, you know, their their personal ability and uh, and their op opportunities going forward. Um, and then post eighteen, um, we we try very hard to sort of drill down as soon as we possibly can and make sure that we're targeting students' individual interests. So um, uh, there's a lot of different sort of targeted 
arrangements. So, for example, we provide uh, an apprenticeship club, which is primarily for year 13, but also like from the beginning of year 12, uh, sort of raising awareness of the students that are interested in doing apprenticeships post 18 and making sure that they get the support that they need. Um, Oxbridge, similarly, if any students are considering do, uh, attending Oxford or Cambridge universities, making sure that they are appropriately prepared for the interview process, that they're um, getting a, additional support in preparing personal statements, making sure that they get uh, extracurricular vision as well. Um, we also, again, have like a range of mentoring and other sort of support platforms as well. So um, we partner with um, organisations like Arts Emergency, who specifically help students interested in creative careers. Um, we've, again, got a mentoring programme with Linklaters um, for students interested in sort of professional services and law and business. Um, we've got a... Uh, um, Partners are at Sir Robert McAlpine, who are supporting our potential engineers um, and uh, an enormous amount of work going into, again, all of the teaching and um, sort of trips and employer interactions as part of that careers in the curriculum. Just making sure that all of the students um, are sort of clear on where their subjects can lead to and feel that supported in, in making those decisions afterwards. Thank you. And it's, it's really helpful for all of the sixth form team and all the sixth formers to know that you're based in our sixth form block. So they can always come and find you and speak to you about anything and everything and all the different things they need for all the courses they want to do in the future. And um, can I just say thank you to everyone. Thank you, amazing staff. It's, it's a true pleasure to actually uh, spend time working with you and talking to you and listening to you. And I know the girls value everything that you do to them as much as I do. So thank you and have a lovely evening. Thank you for your time. Really appreciated. Thank you. Say thank goodbye you. now. Thank you. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Recording this meeting's been recorded. How do I turn it off? I can't, I've just left it. Oh, do I know what it is? It's because Jess is still in the meeting. You've still got somebody in the meeting.